Okay, folks, Bobo's back with you here Sunday morning, threes in. So between the 5th of November 1970 and the 11th of November 1970, we were pretty well all tied up with uh, initial contact sorties, uh, procedural trainers, which involved uh, uh, going through routine checklist items and then uh, emergency procedures. And then uh, the occasional instrument sortie. They put the instrument sorties in there uh, just to give us time in the jet and also to keep us fresh on instruments. Uh, it was not uncommon in Texas in those days for the weather to be one thing when you took off and totally different when you came back to land. So in preparation for solo, they wanted to make sure you could fly an instrument approach if you needed to. And, and on occasion, it happened. So that pretty well took up our time. Um, we would typically get one event a day, sometimes two a day. So we were always pretty active during that time. And of course, we still had uh, PT and the obstacle course to run during that time. Um, I really enjoyed all those activities. I um, neglected to mention, as I was going through the uh, sequence here, uh, about... Uh, some ancillary training we received uh, in building 661. I don't know why I remember that. Uh, it's there. You can walk on Randolph, go down in a basement and find it yourself. It was our um, um, altitude chamber. I think the reason it's gonna be there till the next coming of the Lord because it's too darn heavy to, to lift up and I don't think they could get it up out of the stairs. I think they put it in there and built the rest of the building over the top of it. But there is an altitude chamber when you drive by 661. And um, so we did that. And that was uh, that was kind of interesting. Actually, I kind of enjoyed it. And then right outside the building, they had the swing land trainer for uh, parachute training, uh, teaching us how to uh, execute a PLF, a parachute landing fall. I don't know why they called it fall. I didn't like that, but anyway. So we would... Uh, uh, we went through that and then they had the uh, ejection seat trainer now the t-37 ejection seat trainer wasn't that big a deal it was just kind of a little rail and you you, you pulled um, hand grips and you squeeze the trigger that shot you up a rail a little bit but that t-38 trainer gave you a one heck of a ride that was almost like an instantaneous nine g's but it didn't last very long uh, they fire that up to a charge. I think they used compressed air. And then you go through the ejection procedures. In those days, it was hand grips, raise, trigger, squeeze, and up you went. And, uh, oh, I don't know how far it went up, 25, 30 feet up the rail. But, man, that was a ride once you squeeze those triggers. I think they said in the actual ejection seat, once you squeeze those uh, triggers, uh, you had 0.03 seconds to change your mind. There were there was no change in your mind. You were going. To, you were going out. But uh, so we did that kind of training. That was all done act in actuality before our first rides in the in the airplane. Um, and we had several things like that throughout the uh, throughout the training whenever they they saw fit to put it in. So that kind of brings us up to um, the tenth, eleventh of November, nineteen seventy, and. I'll pick up my uh, training experience here in the next um, in the next episode here. With that being said, this is Bobo Base Gear Stop wishing you a great Sunday morning.